Okay, off the shelf. Uh, Napoleon against Russia. Smolensk, Valutino, Shevardino, Borodino, and Maloyadoslavets. August 15th to October 24th, 1812. Part of the Library of Napoleonic Battles, Volume 5, by Operational Studies Group. Game designed by Kevin Zucker. So it feels like it's been a while since I have walked uh, so blindly into a new game. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest up front and say that I picked this game up uh, very recently, just a couple weeks ago, and uh, picked it up for no other reason than I was looking for, well, actually, I was looking for a series that I could. Uh, uh, take a first look at that I had no preconceptions about, no experience, uh, something completely new. So, uh, so this is what what I went with. Um, can't emphasize enough. I know I know nothing about the Library of Napoleonic Battles. Um, I I'm. In a wargaming sense, not at all familiar with this scale or scope. Doesn't really mean anything to me at this point. Um, as a matter of fact, I can say probably the only thing, the only thing, uh, the only thing I recognize is Kevin Zucker, <laughs> the name, the game designer. Uh, that's it. So, um, so be very, very fresh look, fresh experience. Um, uh, I think what I'm going to do this time is, uh, um, I'm going to start at the back of the, uh, rule book. So in the back of the, uh, systems, uh, yeah, the game system rule book, there is a glossary and it's about, uh, was it, uh, about a page and a half. Um, so when I uh, have, when a game provides something like a, a detailed glossary, or it might it might fall under another name, but basically, when a rules uh, when a rule set offers any type of detailed um, um, terms reference, whatever you want to call it, um, I always like to use those uh, as a as an overview of the game. I like to read through them from beginning to end, and I like to, uh, if they have the rules references uh, embedded, I like to go through the, the terms and take a quick look at each of the rules references. Um, and it's kind of funny because in the rules, it actually says at the start of the glossary section, it says, for a good overview, read this section with the sequence of play, <laughs> which is funny because that's exactly what I would have done. So, especially since it was spelled out by the designer in the rules, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, and it's going to be especially useful for me since, again, I have no background or preconceptions going into this. Um, I did set up, uh, as best I understood, the uh, Maliyaroslavitz um, battle scenario here, um, but uh, before getting st started with that, we're going to do this overview. So, starting at the top here, artillery. Artillery pays infantry movement costs, while horse artillery pays cavalry costs. That makes sense. Um, artillery and horse artillery pay double uh, movement costs during mud, thunderstorms, uh, and snowstorm turns for all types of terrain. That makes sense. Bombardment. Artillery units may bombard in the bombardment phase using the bombardment table at 2 to 3 hex range. So the first thing is, since it references 2 to 3 hex range for artillery, what scale are we talking here? And we are talking, each hex here is 480 meters across. Um, so 480, just under half a kilometer for each hex here. 
And while we're at it, slope hex sides represent a rise of 50 to 100 feet. Um, so, okay, so we're talking a low, a low hill. Uh, crest are 20 to 50 feet, okay. Um, oh, and uh, a hex is woods or marsh if one third or more of the hex contains the terrain symbol. Although I, I did a quick glance here, um, I see that the forests are are fairly well um, conforms fairly well to the hex grid. Maybe, maybe what? Maybe this one. But even there, you let's see, it was it? Yeah. Um, but actually conforms quite well to the hex grid. Um, okay. Uh, and then the other thing is, um, yeah, bombardment table. So just a real quick uh, scan. So we got our Library of Napoleonic Battles combat tables. We've got a bombardment table right there at the top. Looks like we got bombardment strength and a 1d6 roll with some modifiers. See notes to combat tables. Notes to, notes to combat tables, um, bombardment table, okay. So, there are some, yeah, there are some DRMs and looks like strength modifiers, okay. Got bridges, a span crossing a river, see terrain key, okay, terrain key on the map. Yeah, it's already under the plastic, so. Let that go. Cavalry mounted combat units. Okay, including regular, heavy, and light. So we have regular, heavy, and light. Uh, cavalry charge. Any cavalry except light cavalry you may make a cavalry charge resolved on the charge combat table. So back to our combat tables. Uh, player aid here. We've got a charge combat table. Probability ratio. Interesting. Goes from 1 to 1. Starts at 1 to 1. Um, and 1 die roll. And are there, <clears throat> are there modifiers here? Yeah, charge combat table, die roll modifier for weather and uh, mud, charging is not allowed. Explanation of charge results. Overruns, eliminate attacking cavalry. Phasing units return to their starting, ha okay, so kind of like a repulse. Phasing units return to their starting hex. Reduce number of steps, if any. Oh. So it's not just a repulse, actually. Well, okay, I guess you could also call that a repulse. Um, the target's movement costs double in next movement phase. Hmm. Well, I hope there's a, a information marker for that. All right, we have column. Includes all units that arrive on the same or consecutive turns at the same area. They arrive in a chain of units or stacks, unless otherwise specified, all core assets, non-divisional artillery units, followed by the baggage train, arrive at the end of the column. Okay, combat strength, the total manpower of a combat unit quantified in strength points, one SP equals between 400 and 800 men. All right, combat units, all playing pieces except leaders, vedettes, trains, and markers. Only combat units may attack enemy combat units. That makes sense. Is this a... No. Is this a... No. Well, probably is a combat unit, but let's go for... There we go. There's our combat unit. All right, so we have a infantry... Infantry brigade here. Um, yeah, unit size on the right there. Brigade. Okay, we have uh, unit ID. Hard. Um, let's see. It has a color band behind it. This light blue. Um, command designation. So this is the fourth. Fourth Corps. Was it probably thirteenth division? Probably. NATO infantry symbol. Um, then we have combat strength of nine. Initiative rating of three. And movement allowance of four. Um, and there's the blue band behind the the unit ratings. Not sure if that's just for readability or some other. Hmm. Not sure. 
maybe it's just for readability. And then this unit has a reduced side, okay. Reduced side is exactly the same except changed uh, values. Movement, oh, movement and initiative do not change, just strength, okay. Our combined arms, uh, if an attacking force has infantry, cavalry, and artillery, uh, the force gains a column shift. Okay, so we have column shifts in the game. Uh, commanders, leaders at the highest level may place their subordinates, officers, and combat units in command so that they may move. So I think we just have one, one commander. Oh, he's not even a commander. Okay. That's... I Platov here. Platov here is a. I think he's an officer. He is a. He's a officer. Yeah. Okay. So actually, I guess we don't have a commander on the board at this time. Um. So. Yeah, they, they place officers and combat units in command so they may move. Command designation. The designation has two parts. Okay. Roman numeral for the corps. Um, followed by divisional designation in Arabic. Okay. Command range. The range of command or distance beyond which a leader cannot place forces in command. So the commander's range... Eh, don't have a... Commander's range is four hexes. Um, and officer's range, like Platov there, is three hexes. Um, um, yeah can be traced through Ezox if occupied by a friendly unit, okay, but not unoccupied Ezox. Um, command rating, the number of formations and individual combat units that a commander may place in command at one time. Uh, die rolls, we use six-sided die. It says that all, use one six-sided die for all rolls. Okay. Division, units of the same division get a stacking, oh yeah, stacking bonus, yes. Division ID is used in initial setup and to specify regular and alternate reinforcements, okay? DRMs, okay, engage the act of entering an enemy zone of control. So we have, uh, I think, we have six adjacent hex zones of control. Do not extend across uh, an unbridged river, basically. Um, a force, a single stack, or a formation, excluding any out-of-command units. Okay. Any part of a formation in command can qualify as a force. Formation, a group of combat units with an officer that shares the same command designation, linked by color. Okay. Generally, formations are of course size. So, Platov should be... Green, green, um, Platov, green, band, Denisov should be one of his subordinate combat units. Um, and I think COS is probably Cossack, Cossack. Um, I'm guessing we get to all that, all that Napoleonic war game stuff, all the formations, nationalities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Later, uh, friendly. All right, friendly is obvious, but we basically have coalition forces um, against fr French and allies. In command, a unit within the command range of a commander. Or of an officer who is in, or of an officer who is in command. Okay, so I guess we'll look at that later. Initiative rating used to determine whether officers and units may move when they are not in command. I think that's the major use of uh, the initiative rating there. Again, the, the the center, the center value, three for Huard here, um, and for recovery. Okay. Uh, it is also used in shock results. Okay. I'm sure shock will... Well, look at that. Shock does not have a separate entry in the glossary. So there's a there's a shock combat table, which is separate from the CRT. 
So CRT, so CRT is odds versus one die roll. Ah, guess there are no DRMs for the regular CRT. But there are, okay, there are column shifts, okay. And then the shock combat table is attacker's modified initiative defender. All right. Um, uh, leaders, commanders, and officers necessary to command your forces, line of sight. What's unusual? Loss to units in clear terrain is three hexes. The loss is reduced to one hex at night during rain, fog, snow, or any type of storm. Okay. Oh, this is significant because of the, the hidden unit um, part to the design. Okay, march order allows a force to move during the friendly command movement segment. Um... Okay, we'll look at that when we talk about Mali Yaroslavit's uh, setup here. Movement allowance. All right, that's that's uh, that's traditional. Officers, leaders of a formation, core division like Platov there, uh, in charge of all units that share their command designation. They have the second link in the chain of command between commanders and combat units. Phasing player. Um, we do have game. We do have player turns. So we have the more or less traditional game turn divided into two player turns. Reconnaissance, when hidden force markers are removed, revealing the unit in a stack. So I think this is a, this, this, uh, what do they call it? Force marker, hidden force marker covers up Demai, Demai artillery uh, battalion there. That's what that means. Um, recovery turn. Uh, each time weather is checked, a player may attempt to move eliminated combat units in the reduced units box from the... Okay, so there's a... Um, there is a play aid, which I have underneath the plastic next to the map here, that you that walks you through the whole recovery thing, is my impression. Uh, reorganization. That's similar. Repulse. Moving forces attempt to displace enemy units out of their path. The moving force must have five to one odds. Okay, all right. So kind of a uh, attack in stride or overrun, if you want to call it that. Retreat before combat. So we have cavalry may retreat prior to combat resolution, as you might expect. Road march. So there is, there we go, road march. There are specific rules for road marching um, with limitations uh, storms supply lines a line of up to 14 connected hexes from a combat unit to a supply source and I see that there are there's at least one supply source um, on the map I think that's the designation for the, a Russian supply point and there's one for the French as well. At least one I saw on the opposite side of the map. Um, uh, or a baggage train, or on a road or trail, and along a road or trail hexes to a supply source. Okay, the first 14 hexes of the supply line are termed the forward line, and the remainder from the baggage train to the supply source is termed the trunk line. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in play, surrounded. All right, not unusual train units. So we have pontoon trains and baggage trains. They have no zocks and cannot stack. Trains pay cavalry costs and double the normal train movement cost during mud, thunderstorm, or s snowstorm. Okay, train units do not require command or initiative to move. Okay, that's important distinction. Trestles. We have spans crossing a stream, a trestle. I'm not even sure what a trestle looks like, but hmm. So, so following a quick scan of the map, I don't actually see any trestles, so maybe there aren't any in this scenario. Um, units, unit ID, unit types. Obviously we have our infantry, cavalry, artillery, and horse artillery. Um, cavalry have separate terrain costs for movement. So, train effects on movement and, li and line of sight. Um, so, MP, uh, 
So where are the different, where are the different costs? <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, well, no, that's train effects on combat. Okay. Unless, okay, unless that's what they mean, they're actually, that's funny, they're integrated into the MPs to enter across, cavalry and horse artillery, infantry and artillery, okay, cavalry, infantry, uh, I was looking for separate columns, did that even come in, was that even, I wasn't even looking at the screen, okay, so it's MPs to enter across, and, then, and it's in the text, divided, Infantry and cavalry. I was looking for separate columns. Um, uh, units awaiting recovery box. Again, that's the the play aid. Man, I should probably remember to show these before I put them under the, under the plastic. But <laughs> uh, all right, vedettes. So we do have vedettes, light cavalry units that uh, can be broken down into a number. Light, ca oh, okay. Oh, only light cavalry can break down into a number of vedettes indicated on the unit's counter. Vedettes are non non combat units. They move like cavalry, but they don't fight. Okay, so that'll be interesting to see that in play. Uh, when I was separating the counters, I saw specific vedette units. Um, and then we have zones of control, which I already mentioned, but. The vedettes look like that, right there. And so you have, you know, the vedette from this unit, as I understand. Yeah, because you have the full designation. Um, but you have that symbol for vedettes. So that should be interesting. Um, there are a lot of uh, play aids that come with the game, but part of that is that each battle has its own has its own turn record track, so that increases the number of uh, play aids. And also, there are, I think, seven sheet sheets, seven sheets of uh, setup uh, information. Uh, I think three French, four coalition. So, um, Russian. Um, so, a lot of play aids. So here you have an abbre abbreviated sequence of play. Uh, so again, there's a game turn, it's one hour, uh, normally it's one hour in the day. You have your first player turn, followed by your identical second player turn. Player turn has four phases. You have a start phase, command phase, movement phase, and combat phase. This is certainly, by sequence of play alone, this is no more than moderate complexity. No more than moderate complexity. Um, so, we will walk through this. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, your movement phase is divided, I think, between your movement uh, by units in command. Then, after that, um, you're attempting to move units that are out of command by initiative. Um, Combat phase, broken up line of sight, cavalry retreat, bombardment, cavalry charge, combat. Second, okay, yeah, second line of sight step, yeah. So, not very, not, not very extensive. So, that is my first overview. I got a better idea of kind of the very basic uh, framework of the game. Um... The nature of the scenario is that, uh, come on, the nature of the scenario, just, nature of the scenario is that we start with only a handful of uh, forces on each side, and, uh, and, and then a lot of m more forces come on, uh, and the, the battle, I, I guess, I get the sense that the battle builds. So in that sense, I guess it'll be, it'll be good uh, introduction. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we can start with a 
small number of units and, and build 